there's some quartz inside the granite, and quartz has some rather interesting properties. The Great Pyramid of Giza is both an iconic representation of Egypt, as well as the final surviving structure from the ancient list of the seven wonders of the world. The Great Pyramid was once the tallest in the world that was produced by human hands until the Eiffel Tower was finished being constructed in Paris, France, in 1889. It kept this distinction for nearly 3,000 years, and it is highly doubtful that it'll ever be surpassed. There are so many theories linked to the existence of the Great Pyramid, and in this video, we'll be looking at them. Here's 20 the Great Pyramid construction theories that made everyone sit up and take notice. <sighs> Number 20, the Great Pyramids. For ages, people have been amazed by the Giza pyramids. The Great Pyramid is 139 meters tall, making it the largest structure in its desert setting. The Great Pyramid, attributed to Pharaoh Khufu, and completed approximately 2550 BC, held the record for the world's tallest building for a long time. It's generally agreed that Khufu's son, Khafre, constructed the second pyramid around 2520 BC. The Sphinx, a limestone statue of a lion with the head of a pharaoh, is also part of the complex that contains the second pyramid. The third pyramid was likely constructed by Pharaoh Menkauri around 2490 BC. It is significantly smaller than the first two pyramids. Recent scientific research suggests that these pyramids may be far older than previously believed, lending credence to the theory that Khufu simply laid claim to pre-existing megastructures. Despite popular belief, the Great Pyramid was constructed by only 20,000 laborers over a period of 20 years. When we consider that prior historical accounts described their tools as consisting solely of wood, rope, and pulleys, we are left with a sense of awe. It's Hard to think that such magnificence could be achieved in only 20 years by a small number of people using rudimentary equipment. Number 19, the ramp theory. According to proponents of the so-called ramp theory, the pyramids were built using tens of thousands of people and nothing but brute force and ramp systems. There are, however, competing hypotheses on the ramp's design. Straight ramps up the exterior walls of the pyramid have been speculated as having been used by the ancient Egyptians. However, other researchers maintain that ramps that curled around these walls or ramping systems placed inside these pyramids themselves were used by the pyramid's constructors. Earlier this year, researchers excavating the 4,500-year-old Hatnub quarry in Egypt's eastern desert uncovered what they consider to be the ultimate explanation for how the ancient Egyptians constructed the pyramids the remains of an ancient ramp system. Heavy alabaster stones would have been transported up a steep ramp using this mechanism, say archaeologists from the Institut Francais d'Archéologie Orientale in Cairo. And it's possible that the Egyptians used this strategy when they constructed the Great Pyramid in Khufu's honor. The sole flaw in this argument is that the Giza pyramids weren't made of alabaster, but rather granite. What's your view on this? Share your views in the comments below. Drop a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Number 18, the water shaft theory. There were 216 levels to the Great Pyramid and each was made out of stone blocks. The core was made of 2,300,000 stones while the casing was made of another 200,000. There were 230 meters between the outer edges of the base of the pyramid. The pyramid's core stone blocks came from a quarry about 400 meters south of the pyramid while the white Tura limestone casing stones came from a quarry on the eastern banks of the Nile. The rose granite used in the construction of the king's chamber came from Aswan, some 900 kilometers from the Great Pyramid. The core stones averaged 1.27 meters by 1.27 meters by 69 meters and 2,500 kilograms in weight. Blocks of stone used to construct the king's chamber weighed between 50,000 and 60,000 kilograms. The Queen's Chamber and a section of the Grand Gallery, located on the 41st tier, would be finished during the first year of work. 14 of the sluice lines were used constantly, 4 were used to raise other lines, and 2 were used to lift the massive stones needed to construct the chambers. As the pyramid gets taller, the surface area of each tier is less, necessitating fewer sluice lines. The number of sluice lines needed decreased from 14 at the 40th stratum to 6 at the 120th. Sluice lines would be whittled down from 14 to 12 to 10 to 8 to 6 as the project progressed. 
Number 17. Making the blocks. Thousands of men would have been working together, packed tightly into the area of a single city block. However, this was obviously impossible. There was no way those guys could have moved under those circumstances. How could the ancient Egyptians have chiseled such tough stones with such crude implements? Copper saws were the best they could have hoped for. And since copper is a very soft metal, they would not have been able to cut through the tough limestone stones used to build the earliest pyramids. When the wheel had not been created, and there were no pulleys available, how were such massive stones moved around? Where are the shards of broken stone that would have been left over if the stones were sculpted, as is commonly believed? When cutting limestone, cracking is a common occurrence. There must be millions of shards and pieces after breaking 5 million tons of limestone slabs, but nobody has ever uncovered any evidence of them. Number 16. Orion Correlation Theory The Orion Correlation Theory is a pseudoscientific explanation of the possible meaning behind the layout of the Giza Pyramids. It suggests that the original builders of the Giza Pyramid complex intended for there to be a connection between the locations of the three greatest pyramids and Orion's belt in the constellation Orion. Osiris, the ancient Egyptian god of rebirth and the afterlife, was linked to the constellation Orion. The Orion constellation can be fully realized by adding more pyramids, and the Milky Way can be matched with the Nile by adding the river. Robert Balval proposed the Orion correlation theory, which noted the tiny separation between Mintaka, the faintest of the stars making up Orion's belt, and the others. Balval then drew parallels between the placement of the three major stars that make up Orion's belt and the three largest pyramids at Giza. This theory was first presented in his 1989 article for Volume 13 of the journal Discussions in Egyptology. Bauval has elaborated on the concept in joint works with Adrian Gilbert and in their individual works as well. This theory postulates that the three main pyramids of ancient Egypt on the Giza Plateau were deliberately placed in alignment with the three stars in the constellation of Orion that made up Orion's belt as these stars appeared in 10,000 BC. Number 15. Phi Pi and the Great Pyramid of Egypt at Giza The geometry employed in the construction of Egypt's Great Pyramid remains a point of contention. Although it was constructed in the year 2560 BC, its flat, smooth exterior has long since disappeared, leaving just the roughly egg-shaped interior. The cone's exterior shell is still in place, which is useful for determining its true size. The Great Pyramid is 230.4 meters in diameter at its base and 146.5 meters in height. This results in a height-to-base ratio of 0.636, confirming that it is, within three decimal places, a golden triangle. A golden ratio with a base of exactly 230.4 meters would have a height of 146.5367 meters. It's possible that this is only a measuring or rounding error given the discrepancy from the estimated true dimensions of the Great Pyramid is only 0.0367 meters. A golden triangle-based pyramid would also exhibit several other intriguing characteristics. The total surface area of the base and the four walls would be in a golden ratio. Number 14. Eight-sided precision. The Great Pyramid is unlike any other Egyptian pyramid because its center is concave, giving it eight sides instead of the normal four. That is to say, each of its four sides is depressed or recessed. With such remarkable precision, this concavity splits each of the apparent four sides in two, resulting in a unique and astounding eight-sided pyramid. It is only visible from above and at certain times of the day when the hollowing out is most pronounced. This explains why the concavity wasn't detected until the era of aircraft and why the hollowing in phenomenon isn't apparent in nearly every image of the Great Pyramid. It also explains why the concavity wasn't discovered until the age of flying. P. Groves, a pilot with the British Air Force, made the discovery in 1940 while flying over the pyramid. The concavity was brought to his attention and he photographed it, forever immortalizing it. This was something that Mara Giolio and Rinaldi thought would help seal the case around the core. The somewhat concave sides were designed to improve the pyramid's mantle stability, as Werner concurred, as in the case of the previous Red Pyramid. Number 13. The Missing Capstone on the Giza Pyramid 
The Pyramidion of the Great Pyramid of Khufu is missing, which is one of the mysteries of Giza. The Great Pyramid has been missing its top, which would have been many meters in height since contemporary times. Egyptologists think the pyramid's initial crown structure was a smaller pyramid they call a Pyramidion. If so, what became of it? And how would it have appeared? On October of 1900, armed brigands attacked Egyptian Antiquities Organization, EAO, soldiers at the site of Dashur, located in the western desert, about 20 kilometers south of contemporary Cairo. A few days later, EAO director Gaston Maspero visited the location for himself. After that, he was led to witness some incredible items that had been discovered buried in the sand close to a 12th dynasty pyramid that belonged to Pharaoh Amenemhet III. A majestic black granite pyramidion sprung up out of the sand there. Maspero, incredulous at the object's incredible stage of preservation, gushed that they were polished like a mirror despite their age of 4,000 years. The pyramid stood 1.4 meters tall and 1.85 meters wide at its base, and it was covered in beautiful inscriptions. Underneath the solar disk on one face were two enormous eyeballs. On the other side of the face was a pair of arius, holy cobras, with wings. Three lutes formed a sun disk under the eyes. At the bottom of the triangular face were two lines of hieroglyphs, and on either side of the sun disk were royal cartouches carrying the names of Amenemet III. Number 12. The Pyramid's Perfect Alignment Not only have the Giza Pyramid's hollow interiors and secret rooms baffled scholars for ages, so has the question of how the ancient Egyptians managed to construct such massive buildings without the benefit of machinery. The exact alignment of the structures is one of the most puzzling aspects. The Great Pyramid of Giza, or Great Pyramid of Khufu, stands at 138.8 meters, 455 feet tall, and has four equal square sides that are almost perfectly aligned with the cardinal directions of north, east, south, and west. Amazingly, the three tallest Egyptian pyramids, two at Giza and one at Dashur, are perfectly aligned, something we would have never have guessed from a time before drones, blueprints, and computers. It has never been established with certainty how they did this, but several theories abound, such as aligning the pyramids with the pole star or the sun's shadow. Another less complicated idea was proposed by Dash. According to his research, the Egyptians, about 4,500 years ago, could have been able to attain perfect alignment by timing their constructions with the autumnal equinox. Number 11. Modeling the Benben Stone It is possible that the Great Pyramids of Egypt bear witness to the days of creation and the flood. The so-called Benben at the top of the pyramid is a literal arrow pointing in the direction of this proof. As the first landmass to rise up from the primordial sea, or Nun, the Benben served as a symbolic landmark for ancient Egyptians. The first eight gods, four males and their wives, led by the supreme god, Nu, emerged from this territory. All of this sounds remarkably like the scene after the flood as Noah and his family first set foot on the land. When one considers that Egypt is named the land of Ham, in the Psalms and Mizraim throughout the Hebrew Old Testament, one should not be surprised to find such ties. It stands to reason that Ham, Noah's son, would have passed on to his son Mizraim and subsequent generations the stories of creation and the flood. Not surprisingly, given that the plain of Shinar served as the point of dispersal for humanity, the Egyptian civilization evolved considerably sooner after the flood than others throughout the world. Number 10. Time Travel Shock Billionaire Elon Musk has been invited to Egypt to verify for himself that the country's iconic pyramids were not constructed by extraterrestrials. The CEO of SpaceX appeared to back alien involvement conspiracy believers by tweeting his approval of their position. However, Egypt's Minister of Foreign Cooperation does not want his country to receive any of the praise. She claims the evidence would be provided by visiting the pyramid builder's tombs. Experts agree that the tombs found in the 1990s provide irrefutable proof that the spectacular buildings were constructed by ancient Egyptians. Egyptian archaeologist Zahi Hawass also responded with a brief video in Arabic, claiming that Mr. Musk's reasoning was a, quote, complete hallucination, unquote. The Great Pyramid in Egypt 
at over 137 meters in height, is the tallest of the more than 100 remaining pyramids. The vast majority of these structures served as tombs for the pharaohs and the other elites of ancient Egypt. Number nine, the pyramids used real light bulbs. Long has it been pondered how, in the pitch black of the pyramids' vast underground passageways, the ancient civilization managed to perfect its creative and technical achievements. An advanced society could not have developed out of the foundations laid by ancient Egypt, which makes that civilization one of the most remarkable in human history. Wise men among the deviant, idolatrous Egyptians supposedly possessed wisdom dating back to the time of Noah and Abraham. The Jewish sages were rumored to have used electricity for lighting, one example of how they applied knowledge from earlier prophetic eras. One particularly interesting fact about ancient Egyptians has been uncovered thanks to the discovery of wall carvings or friezed in the Hathor Temple of the Dendera Temple Complex in Egypt. The Dendera Temple Complex houses the majority of the friezes studied here. These exhibits prove that the ancient Egyptians had access to illumination via bulbs and the arc light method. But there is more support for the idea that ancient people knew how to use electricity. Somewhere in modern-day Iraq, a few hundred kilometers east of Egypt, is where the hypothesis comes together. Number eight, Sumerian giants hidden in stasis chambers. Numerous far taller giants have been reported, discovered, represented in art, and mummified instances have been withheld from the public throughout Egypt's history. Some light has been thrown on this mystery thanks to the painstaking investigation of archaeological documents, ancient books, newspapers, and images in hieroglyphics and Egyptian art. Strong legends of huge beings abound across the Middle East, with biblical allusions such as Moses' flight from Egypt and the Canaanites' attack on modern-day Israel and Lebanon, adding credence to these tales. Skeletons and bones of tremendous sizes have been discovered in this region of the Bible lands, in other sections of Africa and the Middle East, confirming the reality of these tribes as reported in newspapers. A lost heritage of a race of colossi has been disclosed through the expanding discoveries of giant skeletons recorded in America and other areas of the world, and they are slowly beginning to be incorporated into the historical and archaeological record. Some of the governing classes of ancient Kemet were described as having extended heads, while others were supposed to be semi-spiritual creatures or even giants. The Giza pyramids were supposedly constructed by a race of giants, according to an old myth. It is true that in 832 AD, al Ma'mun visited Egypt and was the first excavator of the Great Pyramid, removing the outer casing of white limestone blocks that had protected it from the elements. It's unclear who the Shedai are, but they may be another name for the Shemsu Hor, also known as the Followers of Horus. It could most likely be a reference to the vanished Arabian city of Iram of the Pillars and its monarch Shad bin Ad, monarch of Ad, whose story is told in Surah 89 of the Quran. He's been called a giant before. Number seven, underground city beneath the pyramids. The Step Pyramid of Djoser, located near Saqqara, is the city's most famous landmark. The six-story pyramid was constructed in the Third Dynasty, which began in the 27th century BC, and is the earliest example of what the ancient civilization would become famous for. Something evil, though, lurks beneath the buildings. According to Mr. Collins, who documented his discoveries in the book Beneath the Pyramids, the key to locating the tomb's entrance was found in the long-lost writings of a 19th century diplomat and explorer. He said, British Consul General Henry Salt describes in his memoirs how he and the Italian explorer Giovanni Caviglia explored a network of underground catacombs at Giza in 1817. According to the report, the pair walked several hundred yards through the caves. Mr. Collins, accompanied by British Egyptologist Nigel Skinner Simpson, retraced the route he imagined Mr. Salt had taken in order to reach the catacombs entrance. A large natural cave was revealed by a fissure in the rock that he found. It was the underworld that he said was so important to ancient Egyptians on their way to the afterlife, 
and he said this artwork was a tangible manifestation of it. Number six, the pyramids are actually gigantic water pumps. This was possibly a section that had been set off for routine maintenance and was shielded from the rest of the building. It's possible that here silt and debris were removed and a stone gate was used to block off the water supply so that a more in-depth cleaning could take place or even that the pump was turned off. Edward Weaver is an amateur Egyptologist who has devoted his life to being an expert on pyramids. Ed has devoted a large amount of time to investigating not only these ancient civilizations, but also the theory that the Giza pyramid features a mechanism for storing and distributing water. Since approximately 20 years ago, Don Wilson, author of the book All About Hydraulic Ram Pumps, has been designing, constructing, installing, and providing consulting services for hydraulic ram pumps. His explorations uncovered the inner chambers and passageways of the Great Pyramid, which act as a possible operational hydraulic ram water pump. Number five, the pyramids were built by the residents of Atlantis. The construction of Egypt's pyramids has been attributed to a variety of individuals and groups, including huge masses of enslaved Jews, the inhabitants of the lost city of Atlantis, and even extraterrestrials. Nevertheless, not a single one of these hypotheses is backed by any evidence, because no Jewish-related items have been unearthed in Egypt dating back 4,500 years, which is the time period during which the pyramids were constructed. An archaeological study has demonstrated that the pyramids at Giza could not have been erected by slaves of the Jewish religion. In addition, the city of Ramses is mentioned in the tale of the Jewish people's enslavement in Egypt, which is found in the Hebrew Bible. In honor of Ramses II, who ruled Egypt from 1279 to 1213 BC, a city that was founded during the 19th dynasty, about 1295 to 1186 BC, and given the name Pi Ramses, was named after him. The city was constructed in Egypt after the time period devoted to the construction of the pyramids came to an end. Egyptologists assert that ancient Egyptians were responsible for the construction of the pyramids based on all of the evidence that is currently available. However, scholars have not been able to agree on how the people who built the pyramids were compensated, how they were treated, or even where they were kept. Number four, mortar of unknown origin. The Egyptian pyramids at Giza are legendary and well-known worldwide. Despite the pyramids' everlasting appeal, few details regarding their construction and motivation are known. While the pyramids are commonly thought to be tombs, there is remarkably little evidence that anyone was really buried within them during the reigns of Khufu, Khafre, or Menkaure. The construction of the pyramids remains the biggest enigma of them. The Great Pyramid of Khufu is 146 meters tall, has a total weight of 6 million tons, and is made up of about 2.3 million blocks of granite and limestone that weigh anywhere from a few tons to 80 tons apiece. However, the building is almost perfectly square and level, with blocks that fit together so well that a sheet of paper cannot be put between them. Most impressively, it appears that the entire project was accomplished in under 20 years. For millennia, Egyptologists have tried to answer the puzzle of how such a large, complex building project could have been finished with such accuracy using only bronze and stone tools. A French geochemist named Joseph Davidovitz put up a radical new theory in 1974, positing that the pyramid bricks were not cut, but poured, albeit the obvious answer is, of course, as always, aliens, how the blocks were quarried and shaped, how they were transported to the construction site, how they were lifted to the upper levels of the pyramid, and how the entire structure was kept square and level are the first four issues that any theory attempting to explain the construction of the pyramids must address. Number three, the pyramids were designed to store grain. The Great Pyramid was built on behalf of Pharaoh Khufu of the fourth dynasty. The pyramid's limestone blocks were brought from a nearby quarry by boat along the Nile, as evidenced by the discovery of hundreds of papyrus fragments in 2013. There are a lot of statements relating to how the ancient structure was put together, but the consensus among archaeologists is that the 2.3 million stone blocks were all moved into place by hand. During Naked Science's Pyramids documentary, Egyptologist Mark Lenner, who directs the Giza Plateau charting project and 
is excavating and charting the ancient metropolis of the builders revealed why there are still questions. Scientists now assume that tens of thousands of trained laborers camped near the pyramids and worked for a salary to construct the Great Pyramid of Giza. The documentary detailed the fragments of evidence that have been discovered, indicating that employees used ramps and sheer muscle power to stack millions of blocks on top of each other. To do this, a large proportion of the internal stones needed to be just roughly finished. Every single stone that would be visible from the exterior was positioned with amazing precision, yet the spaces between them were filled with rubble and gypsum mortar. Number two, the nearby Sphinx actually has an alien. The Sphinx is a legendary beast with the human head of the Pharaoh Khafre, whose reign coincided with the construction of Giza's second pyramid and the body of a lion. 45 millennia ago, when construction began, the Egyptians had neither iron nor bronze tools at their disposal. Stone hammers would have been the primary tool used to carve out the Sphinx with copper chisels used for the final touches. The Sphinx was meant to be included in a greater temple. However, Khafre the Pharaoh did not live to see his dream realized. Three stone blocks used in the construction of the Sphinx temple were discovered during excavations in 1978 in a remote section of the quarry. The ancient Greeks and Romans were not the only ones who found the Sphinx fascinating. Some Roman emperors went to see the Sphinx because they were drawn by the fact that the structures of Giza were already considered antiquity by their time. The first century AD was when the Romans constructed a magnificent ramp to the front of the Sphinx's paws and removed the sand that had accumulated there. The Sphinx could have been viewed from a podium perched at the top of the stairs. In 1931 and 1932, it was taken apart for excavating purposes. Several underground corridors and tunnels can be found within the Sphinx. Treasure hunters are responsible for some of them, while others were likely made by those who recarved the Sphinx. The Sphinx's head is hollow all the way to the summit, where there is a shaft. Supposedly, there are tunnels leading to enormous, naturally occurring caverns beneath the Sphinx. Number one, the pyramids were actually gigantic ancient power plants. The patent, titled The Art of Transmitting Electrical Energy Through the Natural Medium, was filed by Nikola Tesla in the United States in 1905. It detailed his plans for a network of generators to absorb energy from the ionosphere. He considered the planet's polar regions to be an enormous power plant from which endless electricity could be drawn. Tesla's electromagnetic pyramid was based on his design, which was formed like a triangle. Tesla believed that the Egyptian pyramid's strength was generated not simply by their geometric design, but also by their strategic placement. To harness the Earth's energy field, he constructed the Tesla Experimental Station in Colorado Springs and the Tesla Tower on the East Coast. The pyramids of Giza provide an example of how the equator and the planet's eccentric orbit were taken into consideration when deciding where to construct the monuments. The plan was to allow power to be transmitted wirelessly. Numerology was supposedly another area of interest for Tesla. Many people agree that Tesla was a peculiar and obsessive person. The digits 3, 6, 9 were one of his compulsions because he thought they unlocked the mysteries of the cosmos. He liked to stay at hotels with room numbers divisible by three, and he would often drive three times around a building before entering. Some have hypothesized that Tesla's fixation on these numbers stemmed from his attraction to pyramids and his conviction that these ratios and laws form the basis of a common mathematical language. Because there is no information about the pyramids' construction and purpose, some people believe that they are artificial creations that generate energy, serve as messengers, or even contain a code from an old society. What is your take on the theories of the Great Pyramids? Let us know in the comment section. Do well to drop a like to this video and subscribe to this channel. You should also smash the notification icon to get updates from us.